start it. Uh, the way we decided to, to make this work, it's not going to be like three minutes and three minutes. Uh, we want as much participation and argument from you guys as possible. So I'm just going to basically cut them off. They run for, they ramble for too long, and uh, pick up people in the audience. And I thought I'd start with something I wrote last night on uh, intellectual property, so I'm on the same page. Uh, I wrote this by copying Wikipedia, which these guys tell me is okay. <laughs> <laughs> They did, you just asked, it's under an asterisk. But well, he wrote the Wikipedia entry. Save it. Intellectual <laughs> property, or IP, is a number of distinct types of legal monopolies over creations of the mind, both artistic and commercial, in the corresponding field of law. Under intellectual property law, owners are granted certain exclusive rights to a variety of intangible assets, such as musical, literary, and artistic works, ideas, discoveries, <laughs> inventions, and emerged phrases, symbols, and designs. Common types of intellectual property include copyrights, trademarks, patents, industrial design rights, and trade secrets in some jurisdictions. Although many of the legal principles governing IP have evolved over centuries, it was not until the 19th century that the term IP intellectual property began to be used, and it is said not until the late 20th century that it became commonplace in the United States. So basically we're talking about copyright laws which govern creative works. Uh, we're talking about patents which govern inventions. Uh, and not so much, I think, trademarks, which govern uh, marks that distinguish uh, brands. And I think we'll go through by each introducing ourselves and what we do and what our specific stance is. We actually have you guys kind of split. I don't know if I want to do it. So we'll start with Justin and Matthew. Okay. I just have standing doesn't mean that I actually have anything to say about this. The lady got just out of chairs. But um, so my the, the, the reason that we've been having this in the first place. Good evening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Purposely using language like ideas are worthless, no one owns anything, uh, your content is worth nothing, that sort of thing. And the argument that they're making, it started out of this um, idea that when you write a book and you get that book published, it's in hardcover and the hardcover costs 25 bucks unless somebody gives it a discount or unless it's in the remainder menu. So at what point did the actual content of that book become worth less than 25 bucks? And if it's only worth three bucks and you buy it in the remainder bin, is it actually not as good of a book? Are the arguments in it worth more or less? Uh, and then let's say you make it in the paperback. Well, why does making it in the paperback change the price associated with the meaning of the work? Uh, let's say that you download it to your Kindle for 99 cents. Like, as information becomes more easily distributed, how does that impact the worth of the information? I have been a douchebag. So I took that concept and I wrote a blog post around it that basically said ideas are worthless you know, and no one owns anything. And the no one owns anything part came out of the fact that Nick and Steve and I got into a uh, raucous Twitter debate. <laughs> Everyone is so mad. Yeah, exactly. I think it was just the three of us talking. Yes, but but yeah. the, the point of it is, I'm trying to make the argument that if you create an idea, if you've gone through the time to think of an idea, whether it's fiction, non-fiction, something uh, explanatory, whatever it is, you invested an amount of time, an amount of effort in making that point. You deserve some level of compensation based on what that idea is worth, at least to the general open market. And for some reason, that idea either wasn't clearly conveyed or was just deemed wrong and irresponsible by Nick and Steve. And their argument is that just because you have an idea doesn't mean shit. It's when you convert that idea into something sellable that's when someone deserves money. So uh -huh. by their argument, here it goes, the debate. <laughs> by their argument, <laughs> you can sit there and write a book, and yet whoever publishes the book is the person who did the hard work and deserves the compensation. And in fact, there was an argument that they were allowed to publish that book under their own name if they'd like to, because ideas belong to all of us. That's where the idea debate came from. So Nick can see, take it away. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Platt. Uh, I'm a programmer by trade, that's what I've been doing essentially my entire life, uh, and so I uh, take the position that programming is art, like I consider myself to be an artist, um, and so all of my code is given away freely on the internet uh, with 
not no license, but the, the BSD license that I was familiar is a non-attribution. Essentially, all it says is you can't sue me. Uh, it hurts you. Or something. <laughs> but uh, in terms of that, you're free to copy and use any of my code uh, and any of the things that I produce creatively uh, in your own works. And I believe that that uh, is important because essentially, um, I, I think that there is more value to be had in spreading my ideas and getting everyone to know who I am than there is in trying to uh, fight with people over, uh, you know, if, if it's their, their blog post or not. Like, I deserve money because you made an idea for my idea. All ideas are derivative uh, back to, you know, antiquity. So do we have to pay royalties to every single person who came up with every part of every idea before what happened to us? And I don't think it makes any sense. I, I do believe that um, if if people make things that, uh, that they deserve to be acknowledged for the things they make, and that they deserve to be compensated if they can find somebody that's willing to compensate them. But I believe that intellectual property laws, especially in its current form, uh, is twisted against the little guy. And it's, it's for the big companies, the Disneys, to actually make their money, not for people like you who are bloggers, essentially. Um, so I believe it's been perverted from its original intention. That's, that's essential. Um, I'm Nick Pinkston. I'm also a uh, reply We're actually business partners. But, uh, yeah. And so I guess my involvement with intellectual property is I used to work at a patent office at a university, a tech transfer office. And when I... Wouldn't you stand up? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, that's um, So I used to work at the OTM at Pitt, actually. And uh, from my experiences there, I saw that I think that patents, which is what we specifically work with mostly, were really harming the system more than not. And so it's you know, very against government coercion. And so having this, you know, as you said, a monopoly right on something allows all the big guys who have money to actually litigate this stuff. They're the ones who are going to win. The little guys can't do anything when IBM pulls up with 50,000 patents and says, find one that you're violating. Um, I'm just against that. I mean, it just really cycles to what we've had. All of the classical painters do not have intellectual property. All the classical inventors do not have intellectual property. And well, I'm sure we'll get into that more, but I'm definitely taking the position that we don't want any of it. Um, if, I could, if it can be proven that society as a whole would benefit from having patents, I would certainly listen. But from almost all of the stuff we looked at, it's not. It's a net detractor from innovation. So that's what I feel. So are you, when you talk about patents, are you, I mean, are you, you're also talking about um, all kinds of intellectual property, including uh, songs and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, you got to play. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to stand up, too? Okay. Hi, I'm Tammy Dixon. I'm don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Justin asked me to come here, and um, I run Bricolage Theater Company, so I think he wanted somebody on the um, artistic side to have a, a viewpoint. And I'm kind of, um, you know, I just found out yesterday I would be here, so I was like, oh, what, are, what do I think about ideas? <laughs> um, but I, I'm kind of in a, in a weird place. I agree that ideas are um, should be shared, and should be shared openly. Um, but I, I'm a producer, I produce plays, and so I have to pay writers to use their work. Every time I want to produce something of theirs, I have to pay not the writer, but I have to pay someone like Samuel French, a, a, a portion who, who produces, who uh, distributes their work, their plays. And then I don't know how it works out that this playwright gets, gets the money, but somehow they get it. Um, and then I'm also an actor. And I'm in a union, and I have to be paid any time someone sees me on stage. And I can't be on stage unless someone's willing to pay that union to pay me. So I feel sort of trapped in this world of what are we allowed to use and what are we not allowed to use. But I really am very open to discussing this because I think ideas should definitely be shared. I think it's what makes the world go around. I don't think, um, I don't think really anybody owns anything because we, I don't know, I just think there are, I kind of am from the school that there are only like seven stories in the whole world, man versus nature, man versus self, man versus God, religion, that whole thing. And we, and we, because of our environment and who we are and how we grow up and what we know, um, we tweak things. But I, my whole art is using everybody. I'm an actor, so I study people. And if I couldn't use what I see in you, how you behave, then I wouldn't have an art. So I definitely on your side, but I'm also understanding why this debate is happening. I'm very interested to hear how you guys um, feel, too. So, shoot. Just, um, if I can, the reason I, I spoke before, I, I'm a musician. I write songs. I have, I have my second CD coming out soon. Um, if I wasn't 
if there was no cost, first of all, there's no possibility of me making any money anyway. But if <laughs> there is, but just on the off chance that there is, keeps me doing this. If if um if if there wasn't, if I didn't make any money off this, I could I could not do it. And so um, just in a practical in a practical sense, I understand what you're saying, and, and and especially in an information age when there's so much information out there and so easily available. You're tempted to make the leap and say, you know, why put barriers to what can be, what is so easily gotten anyway, and there's so much of it floating around, why can't we just pull it out of here? But my basic instinct is to say that if you were in my shoes, and it's funny because having been in a number of different shoes in my lifetime, I know that, you know, if you're a business owner, all of a sudden you think differently. If you're, if you're an artist, you think differently. If you, if you were a musician uh, trying to make a living off your music, you wouldn't have, I don't think you'd have the same attitude. We would disagree. Uh, yeah. well, can I ask you a question? By the way, yeah. we, have a, we have a dueling musician over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I'm, I, I understand that viewpoint. And we, you know, we've sort of been in the sell a lot of CDs thing in the band that I'm in. Mm -hmm. But we're sort of, you know, trying to transition our brains over to this whole, like, give it away for free. And I think the point that you made was interesting. Is it better to have more people know about you? than to make a little bit of money, you know, from the small amount of people that know, know of you. And so that's like the balance. And I guess my question was, what is the end goal of you as a programmer getting your name out? Is it to make money or is it just like for the, uh, you know, just the altruism of getting, you know, helping society and whatnot? I, I personally uh, have been programming since I was seven. I, I, it is a calling. Uh, it is. All I do all day is read about programming, and I'm absorbed in that entire uh, situation. So I want to spread things because I want to advance my field. I'm actually developing an entire operating system in my spare time because I feel that it will advance the field. Um, and so <coughs> there is that motivation. But on a, on a slightly more practical level, you know, I obviously have to eat. So uh, as, a, as a, I guess, a, a good example, um, of how Nick and I's business came about. Uh, you know, Nick had not seen uh, any of the things that I had programmed. Nick's not a programmer; it wouldn't mean much to him. But he did know uh, when he originally asked me to, you know, be the other half of his business. He uh, was aware that I had done a lot of programming; that all my code was up there, and I've interacted with people, and he's seen, you know, that people uh, value the work that I've done. And so that sort of reputation uh, carries across into. Uh, professional life. So if you Google, like I've been working very hard to use my real name for everything uh, that I do. And so like if you Google my name, you don't get anyone who's not me for five or six pages. And so, you know, that, that sort of reputation uh, eventually turns into, um, you know, business later, even if I don't directly profit. So how do you feel about giving credit versus being forced to give credit? The problem with being forced to give credit and this is, this is what actually, one of the things that happened with an open source software license. Um, there was a, a version of the license that demanded attribution. And the problem is, is that because ideas are generated from such a large group of people, I mean, if you had to list every person that worked on the Starbucks coffee cup, you wouldn't have any room to put the Starbucks logo. It's just not practical to give attribution to all the people. You know, we have millions of people that work you know, on different ideas. And if you tried to cite all of the work previously and, and label everything with, with what it was, it doesn't work. So I think that, as I said to, to Justin, I, I don't think that it's a, a good thing to do as a person to, to take someone's work wholesale and use it against them, but I don't see practically how you can enforce, um, you know, who's going to go around checking to make sure that everybody is, is uh, you know. So your opinion is basically that even though we are forcing people, we're not actually forcing them to give all attributions. Yeah, it's, it's already a degree. So, right, it's like, where do you draw the line? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my argument would be, at what point do you want to draw that line? So we can't put everybody who designs Starbucks stuff on Starbucks stuff. Does the designer, the literal, the last guy who pressed, you know, send, does he deserve to be on the uh, cup at all? Does it, do different amounts of input into the design of that cup warrant more recognition than others? I mean, there's a person who made a color scheme different from the person who drew the logo different from the guy who picked out the paper. And if none of them matter whatsoever, then what's the point of any kind of attribution of logo whatsoever? Isn't everything that we do in Alice? Well, is the point of IP attribution? 
I mean, really, I mean, if you look at what, I mean, both the whole spirit of it, it's really, it says, novel art is to encourage this, you know, society as a whole to benefit. We need to help innovators do this. So, you know, Thomas Jefferson said, we're going to give you a monopoly for three years. That's what the Constitution says here. And that's what generally is accepted. It just kept corporations kept wanting to make more money. Um, so the whole point is not to make me as an individual, you know, a musician, to make money. It's to help everyone. So if you make $100,000, then everyone else loses more than $100,000. It's a net loss for society. So while some people get very rich off things, other people are getting slightly more poor off everyone taking pieces of it. And so, you know, I mean, like for Steve, I mean, it's completely true. Like, you release things. Like, if you're a professor, you publish in journals publicly. I don't really think you get paid for that. But that's how you, you publish a die in academia and get your actual job from your reputation in your academia. Thank you. I have a question. Do you think your optimalness will change as you age? I don't, the, only <laughs> thing that I'm using for, the only thing I'm using for metrics in this is really overall society. Well, I mean, I mean, do you think that as you, um, that later on in life, after you've put in, say, four years into something, and you're sweating over it, and everybody's just Using it. You know, I think <laughs> Are you going to become more possessive of what you created? I, guess. You know, I mean, we, I've created stuff in the past and just given the plants away. I mean, I, I don't create software, I create hardware as far as like various mechanical systems. And I just give away people all the time. They use to email me all the time for automotive systems. I don't care. And it doesn't offend you if they portray it as their own? It should be their own. Yeah, whatever. I mean, if they want to take my stuff, whatever. I mean, they, they know that I <laughs> it. If they want the best information about it, they would talk to me. I mean, if someone else can explain it better. They're getting more utility from that person. So I don't know why I want to have an offer. I want you to point out, though, that you do draw the line at a personalization. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think that you should be able to say, like, these are Nike shoes because, you know, you can't sell them as Nike shoes. You can sell them as, this is exactly what it looks like. I'm fine with using all their art, but you can't say this is a Nike shoe. That's the problem. Can I spin your, uh, your example to get like, Tammy with you? Let's say Tammy writes a play. And somebody else says, I like this play. Hey, it's mine. And they decide to put it on. And even though Tammy spent 10 years writing that play, somebody else now gets all the credit and the uh, and their reputation is built by uh, attaching themselves to Tammy's file. Now, do you know any of the folk songs of Austria? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, know, you know that actually Strauss, actually most of his music is derived from folk songs in Austria. And it was mocked at the time. No one knows who those people were. People know Strauss. Shakespeare. Plagiarize. They all plagiarize. Good artists steal. So we should be rewarding the ones who steal the best rather than rewarding the ones who steal the best. Well, no, see what happens is it's just informs the work. You see, yeah. everyone says ideas are important. Ideas are shit. There's nothing with ideas. 5% is ideas. It's mostly perspiration. It's execution. Anyone who's ever made a company gets an idea and you have to execute. I don't care about ideas. Well, we have one who was ideas. hurt by the plagiarizing. So you want to speak to how you feel about that? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> She doesn't like it. Uh, I, it's a hard thing. In a, in a way, I would love for my play to, to be out there. Um, it's, it's very weird because I'm not exactly a playwright. I, I'm more of a parody. Or like if I do the show called Midnight Radio and I, I parody stuff. I take people's like commercials and I fuck them up and I make them funny. Uh, and I think they might be upset at that, but um, then I think, well, I'm, we're trying to get real people to buy these commercials, but would they want to be looked at in that in that light? You know, not a lot of people would. So I take things that are already there and twist them a little bit um, for my for my own advantage. But I'm not making any money off of it. I'm making people laugh, which is what is better for me. And I prefer because I think like these guys, I have to do this, right? This is what I've done all my life, and I have to do it. I I, I don't want to do anything else. I have no feeling really for anything else. So if if I was mad at it. Then, then something in me wouldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't be doing it. If I couldn't do it, then we'll, if, it, if it's about money, and that's what's precluded me from doing it, then find something else to do. This is what I, I want to do, and I have to do it. So I'm going to do it whether someone takes my play and, and, and does it or not. I would love to get the recognition, but I really think that if you steal from somebody, you're going to get, you're gonna, if you take other people's ideas, and that's what you constantly do, you're not a thinker. You're, you're gonna fall flat. It's gonna happen, and you're not. You're gonna be miserable, you know. But if you're putting stuff out there, and someone else is taking from you, that they can make it better. Like for instance, yesterday we had this party at our space, and it was like a game party. And we bought this cornhole game. It was like seventy-five dollars. I looked at it, I was like, that 
you know, I could make that in five minutes. And so we're like, let's make cornholes and let's sell them at tailgating parties. Now, the guy who invented, or the girl who invented cornhole, should she get, or he get any of the 10 bucks if I sell my cornhole at tailgating parties? Should she get any of that? I don't know, no. Because he made his for $75 and he's fine, right? I think. Eric? I have a bitch and get some stuff that you said the very first uh, thing that you spoke about. And actually, it's hit on uh, briefly by Nick. There seems to be an intense confusion between uh, price slash cost and worth. Okay, the, the, the uh, objective worth or maybe the subjective worth of, of an idea or a project is completely separate from, from the, the price that it can fetch uh, on the market. And so they need to be uh, pulled a, apart because uh, to say ideas are worthless is, is misleading, and whoever originally said that was just as confused. Um, <laughs> there, there is no, there is no natural objective price to to an, an idea. Um, and as far as you had said, um, uh, you, know, you know, hey, ideas are worthless. You know, pub publishers are the ones that should make the money. They're the ones that, that do all the work. That's the whole point of contracts. See, free contract is where all this should should play out. I come up with an idea. If I I have a choice. Do I want to just spread this idea to the world, or do I want to make money off it? Now, if I want to spread it to the world, it's I'm doing it for the love of the, of the art, for the love of society, or just because I'm a crazy nut, whatever. But if I actually want to make a living out of it, okay, well then I have to be smart about this. And I'm going to do business with somebody I trust, I'm going to find a publisher, and I'm going to contract with that publisher and say, the you know, terms of this contract are such that you get X percent, I get Y percent, I have done something that you can't do. You're a producer. You're not an idea maker. You're a you are a, a, a publisher to me of, of the work. And so I get my remuneration from my idea going to this publisher. The publisher gets uh, paid for publishing. You work together in a contract. I mean that it, it's a partnership kind of deal. But what you're saying is that the 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 um, so-called creative artist contribution isn't really worth as much as it's cracked up to be. And the, the public, not to put you on the spot, but you know, um, throughout history, um, especially in the music industry, there's been a long history of record company executives who have seen themselves as basically um, the, um, the important person in the deal. And they would give a musician who wasn't too perhaps educated, or they'd give him a Cadillac or something and, uh, and some money to buy some some beer and some uh, wine when he needed, and they would to take the profits. Now, are, are you saying that that's essentially okay? I'm saying that what's beautiful is today's world, we don't even need record labels. Like now, like a new, in a new market for this, if you put yourself online, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars are going to do so, but if you do have a unique style, unique way, People are going to find you, and they're going to popularize it. Whether or not you get rich off it, maybe you, I mean, look at all different music models and how you sell CDs, basically, on whatever, you know the music stuff better, you can probably talk to that more. As far as, you know, the, from the Grateful Dead to who else? We learn right? from evolution, right? I mean, we learn from other people making these mistakes, or failing, or winning, and, and that's how we change. Do you want to talk about music? I just think that there's, like, a little cultural schism thing that happens sometimes that often is, like, uh, the cause of the, the, the polarization of the, the opinions, because ultimately they serve the same purpose. Point being that, like, one thing you understand with the internet now is, for the most part, the person that originates the idea is going to get credit for it, because there are people that are out there that feel that solely their responsibility is to point out that this is the original guy that did it. So, like, that's something that they want to, they want to find, there's not people out there who be like, no, that's the original guy, you stupid idiot. They want to do and, th and that's this new thing that's incredible. That there's this accountability that is unheard of, you know, like whatever, <laughs> for the most part. But you know, this is a different thing. This is the thing that made me fall in love with everything about the internet, with the idea that you know there are people that really care about these, you know, making sure you give credit where credit's due. And I think that there's a new culture that's different from the old culture that isn't 100 fully baked. I think yet because I think that we're in the wonder and the awe. Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to build a name for myself. You know what? The idea is, fuck it. People are going to come to me because I generate those ideas, not because of the one idea I generate. So they're going to know my name as a person that's going to, you know what? If I'm in that group, if they get me on their team, they're probably going to win. And that's kind of like the end goal, I think, of like this new kind of thinking, where it's like, maybe it's not the band name, maybe it's not the song, but you know, it's more like a concert. People, oh, you are the person that's going to generate that magic. You're going to find a way to make money off of it somehow. So now, 
you know, I guess what we haven't gotten into yet is the money and the IP part. Because in the end of the day, if someone else does take your shit and puts their name on it and then makes all the money, you get pissed off. And the question is, at what point are you going to reach for a lawyer or a, or a gun? You know, and that's basically what's happening, right? Because at the end of the day, you want, you know, if somebody's wronging you, you know, and for the most part, the internet's got these built-in regulators that are amazing. You know, it's, it's a whole system. But I think we're just yet sort of finding out what the new comfortability is. So I, I think that part of that too is there's, there's a shift in perspective of what you're selling, right? So uh, my parents sort of view music as selling CDs, right? I, I see it as as buying the band's image and their music. So like I almost never buy CDs, and I, I obviously wore the shirt as a little bit of a troll, honestly. Um, but I will pay to go see my favorite bands every time they come into town because seeing them play is completely worth it. And I go see the same bands year after year after year because I want to support their music. And that's currently, even under the, the current system, that's how they really make their music because it's the performance. So that's right. they're still on the hook for all of the fees involved in making the album that you have not paid to listen to or share. So the they price are, of them going on tour is not just the price of them going on tour, but also the promotional materials, including the tens of thousands of dollars to make the album. When I pay so for an advertisement to promote my, you know, when McDonald's buys the billboard that says, you know, don't eat this sandwich because it looks so good, do you expect to pay them for their advertisement for the gym? I see albums as advertisements, essentially, oh, okay. is the difference in perspective, right? So what you're selling is not. Never get paid. Tell it to Google. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the thing is, is that, yeah, it's like it's, that's the difference, essentially, that uh, the, the CD is an advertisement so that you can tour more. I don't, I don't think, I think there's also sort of a, a, a difference to, it comes back sort of to something we talked about a little bit online with the, the concept of, I guess, from my perspective, yeah, if you generate an idea, it's not necessarily worth something unless you do something with it. Um, you have to you have to you have to build something upon that. And so, for instance, playing music like you know, when I when I go and listen to uh, you know Nine Inch Nails, right? And so even that's all electronic music, but I couldn't play that music. Listening to a recording is completely different than going and seeing them play it. And that's that's what you know Trent Reznor is the only man who can play that music in that way. And so I pay to go see them. It doesn't matter if somebody else would pay playing the same. You know, it's, it's different. And so that's where the worth is, not in the you know, advertising. Or a couple questions in purple. Well, I think you have it totally backwards. I don't know if you've ever put an album out and toured. It's usually people do the, the tour to promote their album, because that's really where... In the old way of thinking, but is that actually productive for the band? I mean, like a contract it's the complete opposite. If you're a small band, you're usually, you know, paying <coughs> your whole way. You're lucky if you get gas money when you do a concert. It's it's. But if people buy your album, then you know that that keeps going. And then people are like, oh, I saw this band, and then you know, oh, I want to get their album too. You know, so I can get back. I think the whole yeah. music scene has been Bring destroyed <laughs> yeah. overall. Because like I agree with, with him, and I think the whole new model of the music industry is going in the sense that if you promote yourself and you just give away the music for free, it's more profitable for people to go see you in the long haul than to go buy your CD. Especially now that I don't buy CDs, I'll be honest, I doubt them. Like, and it's because the whole motto is like, a CD comes out and it's crap. There might be only two songs in a whole CD that I like. So I'm coming from the aspect of, I don't care what you put out, but if there's only two songs, I'll just see the whole show just for those two songs. I'm not going to pay the $12 to just to buy well, the well, you you pay pay three three to show. I will pay $30 to see the show. But you wouldn't pay 12 for the album. Nope. All right, that would you pay for the two songs? The two songs that you I would pay for the two songs. I would pay, I'll pay for the two songs. <laughs> That's why I like what iTunes is doing, and a lot of those, those uh, publishers or whatever losers are doing it that way, where you don't have to buy the whole CD. But I also agree with the sense that if you put the CD out for free, I'm more willing to go buy your or go pay the ticket to see you play. Buy a T-shirt. Yeah, buy the T-shirt. The music thing is for rock. But <laughs> and then you. Well, here's, here's the beauty of the system, though. I mean, in a free market, if you want to do it that way, you want to promote the shows with three CDs, or you want to promote the CDs with the shows, whatever, fine. Whichever's going to make more money, but the market's going to sort that out. Whoever's going to be more successful is going to make more money, you know, 
no, no big deal. Well, as far as we were saying, there's more costs going into things, it costs money to get the sessions on, and what have you to do the mastering, all that stuff with the CD. Great. Hold that to your overhead costs and your ticket prices. I mean, get, give the CD out for free, and then just roll, roll all your production <laughs> costs into the, the price. So the people are stealing CDs, or stealing music right now, so they pay for the CD, but they'll pay for 30 bucks to see the show. But if the show then costs 100 bucks to make up for the purchasing or the, the, the making of the album, I think people would know what happened. People are going to start saying, well, you know what, the live show should be free because it's just noise moving through the air. So I'm going to stop paying for tickets. And instead, what, what I feel I'm allowed to pay for is the DVD that was made of the show. So at what point is a musician allowed to pay for It's selling a scarce for good versus a not scarce one. The yeah. CD is infinitely freely reproducible. And so it's, you know, the supply is infinite. There is an infinite number of CDs. Can I, can I just say one well, thing? Before we get there, I did promise you. Yeah. Sure. Well, I, I was just thinking, like, it's not really at the end of it though and maybe Tammy will the question is not do you still get to make music it's do you get famous you know it's like nobody you, just because nobody listened to your CD online doesn't mean you can't go and make another song and record another song on your computer and do it however the heck you want the question is really about who's well, if you're out there just to get famous, there are certain roads that you can take just exactly. to, to do that, and you won't necessarily be, yeah, and that, and you won't necessarily be loved by what you put out there, but it's just the celebrity, this celebrity, this beast. Um, so, I, you know, what I do is it's not tangible. You can't hold it. So if I can't hold it, then why not? Uh, who can? You know? Who can? Isn't it so that we've got two conflicting things going on here? We've got old distribution CDs, new distribution, electronic media, and the argument's different in either camp. Because when you're when you're talking about new media, when you're talking about MP3s, for instance, versus CDs, you can't make the same argument in both cases. You know, this gentleman back here said he buys two songs. He's buying MP3s. He's not interested in buying a CD. He's buying a song. Not the what well, now he calls the business part. Of being able to find the song without having wants. to search online and do a spam and do, you know, Apple is as we were talking about earlier. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs says piracy is the is a is a fact. So we need to compete with three. Like you know, it's if if I charge a dollar for something, Nick charges two dollars for something. Everyone says, oh, Nick must have uh, done something better. His is of higher quality, right? We both take a dollar off our prices, and now I'm free, and Nick is a dollar. We're in the same competing situation. His is more expensive, so we need to provide more value. And so that's you know, the difference. So at iTunes is beautiful, um, and I've actually purchased albums off iTunes uh, because you know I could go directly to iTunes, and click buy, and the music is on my computer. And that was well worth the five hours spent going on a pirate bay and trying to find about 10 torrents and then looking at porn ads and then <laughs> <laughs> buying some porn you know, yeah, buying some porn ads. Maybe, you know, like, you know, maybe getting a virus out of it. Like, that's, that's the thing. So, you know, to enable that, you then have to pay because that's worth more as a service. So, I, my question for you, earlier you guys stated that, you know, part of what the reason why you distribute all this for free is so we can get recognition so you get a professional job. As a business owner, why should I pay you then if you're going to produce the information you know, for free? Well, why is it okay to charge? You know, why is it okay to charge your business for that same service that you get for free? Here's the, this is, we sort of talked about this online a little bit, right? It's about like uh, it's the website that we do, right? So you can't, for, for the way that I look at things, like you can't expect to to spread your idea and then still retain control of it at the same time. So nobody should force anyone to share like ideas. Like Nick has an idea, I can't be like, hey, Nick, you just want to Think about anything cool today, and have to tell it. You know? <laughs> if Nick tells the whole room, he then can't expect to still retain control of what he's given it to everyone. So, for instance, in our business, right, all the code that I write for my website, I'm not giving that away. It's a secret, right? I'm not. I'm not. Everybody should be free because no one's because forcing. Us. No one. No one is forcing me to give it away, right? So if I put that code online and somebody wanted to use it to develop an identical service, then cool, right? But whenever, but I haven't given it away to anyone. But so you told me so, that information should be freely given away to everybody. If you, you know, give it away, if you give it away. You the the key is a choice. But you don't always give it away. Yeah, you don't own it. So why do you have to? If somebody, if somebody, if somebody else comes up with the exact same idea, they could develop the same website that I'm working on right now, but I'm better than them, and I'll beat them at it. Well, can so I have your code? You said it's for free. Your idea's not worth it. What he has to give it away. He puts it out there. He's saying you should have the choice. 
Can so if you publish your website, your website, you publish your website, I can take your source code. You can take whatever you can get out of my server. So well, no, why would you? No, why would you lock it though? I mean, you said information should be freely shared. You're locking information, so therefore you don't believe this share. My what I'm. That's not free share if you lock it. If I lock my door, I'm not allowing anyone to come in. That's. Yeah, okay, I'll let you in some doors, but not this door. I think the fundamental difference. That's though, choice. The fundamental difference is we all know inventions that come out with it multiple times. You know, the telephone is done by two guys within like a couple of days. Yes. Yeah. You know, so I mean, this one guy, I mean, they all do the work, and they all do the work. They both do the same amount of work, or at least enough work to make a telephone. They both deserve to have patents in half. I mean, really, the thing is, is, I don't want someone being able to say, redevelop a website, and then someone's saying, oh no, even though you did all this work, this dude made it before you, and even though you did everything you with the idea of something else, that the government's just going to say, oh no, you're not allowed to do it, because this guy bought a right from like the king to have the exclusive rights. And that's what we don't want. If we don't want this one company to control, say a drug. I don't, want to have, I don't want to have someone having a drug and saying, oh no, I'm going to let all these people die because no one else can copy this. Even though India go there and in six months you get the same drug. I mean, what a way to health care if medicines were incremental costs and pennies. So what you're not saying, you're not saying that, you're not saying that information should be freely given. We're you're saying, saying that you should choose it. it to be not freely given. So okay. ideas are priceless, is what we're saying. Not worthless, but priceless. So we don't think if anyone contributes to them, then no one can say you can't use my idea. If it's on your, on your server, in a book that you wrote in your journal, we don't want them saying, we're going to go in your house now, and take your idea. Now, what happens if someone were to hack your website, get into your server, steal all your source code? Sucks to me. Now, <laughs> 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 like, like, essentially, like, 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 I write new features every two or three days. So I, even if I did give you my website today, I feel that I would still beat you as a company because I am frankly better than you are. So if I get all your my improvements to that over time, like you can't, you're, it's going to stand still, right? So, so if you have the code right now and I have the code right now, and we both start the race. I'm faster, so I'm going to win. So you know, that's the thing. See, but the thing is, you're selling yourself. You're not telling your code. So if I'm a coder and I look at your stuff and copy your exact thing and boot you to the market to sell that thing and make a profit on it before you guys do and add it, who cares? It's like you can be better, but I'm making money on it. Good, right? But if you're able to get value. If you're able to provide society with more value than we are, then good. You're society doing better. You're doing work to put a product out on the market. So don't you deserve to serve that. That makes me better. Because I'm exactly. able to And that's why you're able to make money, not enough, right? Because you're a material argument. Well, then, then so you're better what, than that's me. That's what's frustrating about that. It's like, you guys, you generally think you're better than copyright, so nobody else can do it. And what? What do I? No, what we'll do is we'll start at equal levels, we'll beat them because we're better. We don't need to copy them. In, this, in the long haul, I've already, I've already made the money. Yeah. This guy, this guy's smarter than me. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it, so, my, I guess maybe so my operating system. I have no idea how to make money at all. And we actually had this discussion because this is a group project amongst a bunch, a bunch of students. Okay? We decided, are we going to release this under something that's really restrictive or something that gives it away? And essentially, if, if somebody can figure out how to make money in that project of mine, then they've done a ton of work that I have no idea how to do, and then they deserve to make money from that. Exactly. You're, you're actually that's providing a service. If you go out and you go and you pull for real, if you have the ability to go up and, and know that he's an expert programmer and he's stealing his stuff is worth something, or if he's got something that's great, you can steal his stuff. Just the fact that you know who to find, where to find it, when to find it, what's going to make money, you are actually providing a service. It's, a it's, just, it's just like the old, with the old model that um, with the, the promoter that comes along and he gets the poor, you know, you know, you know uh, Booms in a car or whatever, and he gets this bad rap, or whatever. Well, maybe he's not the most ethical man in the world, but he also serves a purpose because prior to modern distribution models, who was going to find the next great artist? Who's going to find Elvis if it wasn't some you know unscrupulous guy who's going to come along and you know give him booms in a car or whatever? Who's going to find the, the Beatles if it wasn't some promoter happened to be sitting in that that bar at that, that particular time? And for the money so, behind him too. So you we're talking about piracy. What you're talking about. I guess. I mean, like, if you can so what is, that, so and you're putting a value on piracy. Most people, well, I don't want to. Some call it piracy, some call it free exchange. Yeah. What's your definition of piracy? Why is there value? Um, my definition of piracy would be the legal definition of piracy. You know, it's copyright infringement. It's okay. just a, a repurposing the, of the term. I just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like the processing thing, right? Like, you, you need to disperse. 
but I don't think that dispersing, like the order to disperse is correct. So it's the same thing, but like, piracy is piracy, you know, like, you're breaking the law if you do it, sort of. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, depending, on the over that. depending on the country you're well, in. What is the value in, is, what is the value in piracy? And being able to pirate. And what he was talking about, taking someone else's IP and being able to pirate that and make more money. It's, of. it's a side effect of, of the, the fact that information, uh, the cost of distributing information is effectively nothing. And you can, you so, can use that stuff to build things. I mean, if you look at, like, say, the dot coms 10 years ago, you would have got all this proprietary software, it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, for 25 grand, you can get all this free code, all server software, operating systems, everything for free. And so you can build off that as tools to make something of value for society. So you could make this company for $25,000, yeah. is what he was saying. It's yeah. different. You couldn't even buy a server for that in 1999. I, but. I'm just, I mean, just to reframe this a little bit, I, 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 most of what you're saying I, uh, is, is a fait accompli. In other words, it's it's this this is this is what's happened uh, because of the technological facts, uh, mu music, it's uh, it, it's uh, and writing and stuff cannot be protected in the same way that it, it used to be. What what I find interesting is that you're even putting a value judgment on. You're saying it's good or or you're saying it's bad. I don't know that it's either. It just is. Yeah, so, um, so what depends on your metric? Um, what depends on your metric is? How do you measure good and bad? You know, I would say benefits of society, and you would say personal profit. I don't know. But are we arguing whether the process is good or bad, or whether the laws that govern it is good or bad? Well, I mean, that's really the same assessment. It's just a I'm saying, you know, I'm saying it, it's a fact. We've already outrun the laws that govern it, and um, and what I find yeah. interesting is, like, you know, you see that. <laughs> And yet you still go on iTunes, mm -hmm. and I, I sell my my CDs on iTunes. So um, it's not it's not a total e either or. I mean, if, if you really believe so strongly that this was good, then you would say that really iTunes uh, shouldn't even be charging uh, you know ninety nine. Why? Well, no, they're providing providing a valuable service. Yeah, it's safe, easy, and well the porn yeah. yeah. So how does IP affect, how does IP benefit or hurt, and how have any of you been personally benefited or been hurt by IP? By the um, how does well, it Steve's hurt? famous. That's true. Yeah. Justin Gagney uh, talked about my blog, and Chris <laughs> Brogan blogged about his blog, and now there's blogs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> You've been all invited to debate. You're all listening laws. to me. By the actual laws, yeah. I have never... Uh, benefited from copyright that I can think of. Has anyone on that? I've benefited in the way that I've been on television. Every time I'm, that episode airs or the episodes air, I get a little piece of it. But if I, you know, I was I got a check the other day, and, and it's always like, oh wow, that's great. But I that was years ago when I did that. I forgot about doing that. It was something I did at the moment. It was and I put into the world, and then I forgot. And if I never got another check again, I don't think I would have cared. Because that's what I did in that moment, and I was fine with doing it in that moment. And I didn't I made money at that moment of doing it, and I didn't need to make money subsequently every time someone saw my face. But I do. So I'm benefiting it, you know. But if it didn't happen, I don't know. Okay, that's good. Is that union or non union? Union, say. Now, what if you were inadvertently put into a non-human situation and you find your face showing up up and down the eastern, eastern coast and you could only get a free smoothie? <laughs> it would depend, on, it would depend oh. on what my face was, was selling. If it was something I believed in, if I bring out clean in today's market, there's a and chance you'd be pissed. There's a chance. That's point. There, there is a chance that I would be pissed, but yeah. uh, but but I would say, what can I do about it? I'm not going to sue anybody. I'm not going to waste my time doing that. I'm that's that's another thing is that, that the law is definitely. I mean, the only person that wins with intellectual property law is lawyers. Yay! I mean, <laughs> Be a lawyer over Corona or whatever, but like the point is, he doesn't get any money unless you get it. <laughs> <laughs> in the fact 
vast majority of cases, like, you know, and then it's going to be years down the line, like, this is the, the way that these lawsuits work, like, it's very integrated. Um, as a counterpoint to that, uh, there's a story you may have heard about this uh, guy named Dyson. He made a really cool backward vacuum, and uh, he yeah. sold it in Europe and everything. And this uh, company you may have heard of called uh, Uber. They said, hey, this guy's making a pretty good vacuum. It's better than ours. So we're going to take the idea. We're going to market it in the United States and make all kinds of money off of it. Um, you said that you know IP law only benefits lawyers. Hoover actually, or Dyson actually sued Hoover and uh, took the uh, legal proceeding as far as he possibly could. He lost his family. He lost his home. He lost everything he possibly could. Um, but in, in the end, the uh, court said, you know what, this was your idea. Um, they, Hoover did not have the right to take your idea and sell it all over the world without your permission. And now Dyson is one of the uh, leading manufacturers. Probably most people have a better impression of Dyson than they do of, of Hoover today. Heard so, that. so we have one story where it benefited someone. What about all of the other cases? Yeah, yeah. But he lost his family and everything. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 Eric's been waiting. Yeah, oh, all right. So I'm going to actually put you guys in the hot seat now instead of uh, Justin. You brought up an interesting point. You said, okay, maybe uh, for me, it's, I'm going to do something for the good of society. Maybe you want to do something for, for your personal profit. Now, in your ideal world, information should be free, but that should be sort of the ethos of, of the system. Well, great. Well, what if I created some, some content and um, I, I want to, I, I'm, I now want to, when I follow the shoes of Justin, I want to be a douchebag. <laughs> I want to no, but seriously though. Okay, I want to make money off this. I don't want to share it with the world without some green. Okay, for whatever reason, I can be the biggest scumbag in there, whatever. But I have a right to my property. So now I, I don't see it. Oh wait, you make so, less money. So, so I want, I want to make that money. Maybe the market's going to kill me. Okay, that's a separate issue entirely. The market may decide that I'm a moron. But I have a product that I want to make money for. I don't want to just give it out to, for free to everybody. And assuming that ideal market conditions that I can actually make money, what would you say is an appropriate legal situation such that I, as the owner of my ideas and my products, can actually receive compensation for them, even if in an ideal world I wouldn't really want to do that? I think the actual question isn't so much how can we get you paid, it's how we can get society as a whole paid. So it's a net thing. You know, drug companies extract billions of dollars every year and everyone's sick. So I mean, to me, it seems like if we would open source that stuff and let you know the generics pop yeah. out, then we'll get. Woo hoo! No, no, no. So basically, you you're basically just, just taking a great big piss on private property. No, no, I'm, I'm saying that that isn't property. But you, the, is it? Like, can I sell the air around here? It's my property as much as I can get in. You know, it's not going to happen. <laughs> 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 so, 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 you don't believe in land rights? Excuse me. You don't believe in land rights? Scarce spending. That's a scarce good. We're not talking about. And my ideas aren't right. scarce. No. Yeah. Yeah. You can, no, no, no. Right. Can you do it? I can do it. Okay. Sell blood are you, are your ideas uh, are you are you scarce? You are this expert I'm programmer. You are so much better than than everybody else. You, can I, I, you yeah. are scarce. I am scarce. As far as I know, there's only one. of Your ideas are as scarce as you are. It's not. There are infinite as long as you're around. Okay. For the sake of the audience, then define the economics of scarcity. Economics and scarcity. Yeah. I mean, basically, so there's X amount of, you know, say, gold, for instance. So no one's making new gold anymore. They're digging it, but it's a set rate. So if everyone wanted as much gold as they wanted, we would deplete our resource. The thing is, on your computer, you can hit copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, and you just keep getting the same resource over and over, and no one loses, unlike gold. So the problem is with ideas. You know, oh, I have the idea to split the atom in the sweat. Okay, well, everyone else can do the same thing as long as they can get uranium. You know, that's kind of the issue. Your ideas aren't scarce. Maybe you, the maker of ideas, are scarce, but the ideas themselves are not scarce. Well, but you don't Everything is idea, you copyright the execution, that's the idea. No, you copyright ideas, no, you patent the execution. execution. Right, that's no, right. But you can not patent ideas too, but that's well, in court, right? Let me ask a question. Is it about the threshold? Let me ask you, you made an argument, you have to make a decision if you want to make it available, or if you don't want to make it available. To me, it seems like you have a threshold. If you, I was writing a book on leadership, right? An actual book, and you'll have to go through the publishing house in order to get published. If, the, if I knew that, no, Maybe 50 people would buy it, and I can use social media, I can promote it, I just make it available and get my name known. Okay, it's positive, I can get more consulting. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the publishing house tells me, okay, it's, it's the most amazing book on leadership that ever was written, and you, I will sell it you 10 million copies. What would you do? Would you say, okay, they, the society will benefit, 
let's do it, let's give it to the society, we just said, okay, 10 million, you know, maybe I'll keep 2 million and give 8 to the church, but I still want to make some money. <laughs> I, I think it's a yeah, fresh call. It well, depends how much money you can get out of it. The real, the real area goes, if they offer you that deal, then that means they think the free market would buy it. So yeah, take the deal, whatever. The thing is, though, is I think the argument is that why would they have the incentive to do that? You know, Justin's argument, why would they have the incentive to publish a book if someone could take the thing off the shelf, scan it to a computer, and then sell it as PDFs or give it away for free? So really, like, if you're getting deals, fine. I mean, I think that they're probably not going to be able to copy the book fast enough for, you know, the three, first three months where everyone's actually buying the book. They'll make the money back on that. Well, but then what, Jared, what uh, you are saying is that how can I uh, ask them to copyright my book? If it's not my book, there are so many people whose ideas I kind of borrowed a million. I read, I don't know, thousands of words, thousands of other books. I cannot give all of them credit. So in a way, I do feel that uh, the millions of dollars that I'll make off my book, it's not really mine to keep. I mean, depending yeah. on how you define property. I mean, that's the whole thing. Maybe it is yours to keep, maybe it's not. You're a copy. Well, say, say I'm a, a writer, a musician, a photographer, whatever. Why is my labor not worth the value of a carpenter, a mason, or any other people? Yeah. I did work, I create music, I create right. uh, literature, right. I create. But your stuff is only work where people will buy. If I, buy, if I just put a brick wall on a field, no one will pay me for it on a mason. Right, but, but you're, you're, you're saying that. Uh, that the people who create, the workers, their their stuff's worthless, and it's the publishers, the studios, those are the people no, that should be able to make it. You're making it sound like, like those who, yeah. people who are the actual workers, no, but, but they, they should just be screwed. Because if, if the studio, which you know, owns, has access to networks and whatever, they can take my stuff and they be like, oh, there we go, we, we just got some content, and now we yeah. have this movie, or we have this television program, or an album, or whatever. Where does that leave the worker, the writer, the person who created it? I mean, really, though, if you look at studios, I mean, you can do what a studio does now without having, I mean, if the studio can't sell stuff, they're not going to make money either. They don't deserve it. I'm not saying give the studios all the money. I'm saying they're not able to make money unless they can sell it. To take, your, to take your idea a little bit further, I think we're on the same uh, uh, thought process, which is uh, what disturbs me is that, um, again, if we're putting a sort of a value judgment on this, that this is good, then um, Kindle, uh, Amazon, uh, is it Amazon or Magnet? Yeah, mm -hmm. And all the, uh, and the uh, Apple I, iPod and the, uh, and the uh, clones of Apple iPod, the Zooms or whatever else makes it. They're, they're, they're cleaning up, not Zoom, but they, the rest of that, you know, they're, they're cleaning up and they deserve to clean up. And they deserve to clean up there while the artists who make all this stuff starve. Something strikes me as inherently in unfair and unjust about that. I can't help yes, it. Do right. you want to say a little to that? Selling it is not about justice, right? It's about how much money can you make for the things that you sell. So if I'm selling a scarce physical good, it is significantly easier than selling a non-scarce good, right? Like the reason Apple can make a ton of money is because they can manufacture these things and they're the only people that do manufacture these things. And uh, except for the people in China that copied it, but whatever. I mean, yeah. they are selling a physical thing, so it's significantly easier to make an They depend smack out of the parts of it. Yeah, Apple. I, I, I love and hate Apple. I'm an Apple fanboy, but they conflict with this kind of stuff all the time. Ideas uh, are scarce, though. I only have my lifetime to create that. That's a finite time. No, you no, know, your definition, yeah. your definition of scarcity was a finite amount. But yet you're right. So yeah, and you're the person. My life is finite. Scarce. You are. I'm your ideas are not. Your yes, they are. When I die, my ideas die. If I don't change, 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 change today, if I don't change, yeah. once we had a story in his head, once we had a story in his head that he was, you know, getting ready to write, then he died before he wrote it. Einstein's how how is it? How are we going to get? Einstein's going to be like, I'm going to the world of death. Take it back when we've mentioned pharmaceuticals, and I think that goes way past ideals. That's like a major moral issue. If you're going to say, like, I have real issues with pharmaceutical companies that are saying we're going to keep these um, patents on these drugs for X number of years because this is going to fund our research, but they're way past like. Oh, intellectual, like intellectual property. Does this belong to us? Should other people share? There is a moral imperative to like these drugs can and should be cheap. Like that is um, like like you're a jerk if you don't think they should be. Like, <laughs> it comes down to whether you're a jerk or not. Well, we're <laughs> 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 you're a jerk. So you can't work. Hold on. How many people are actually amoral about this? It's just a point I want to make that like you know again it comes down to scarcity. The, the the gene the the 
or not necessarily a gene, but the chemical formula is uh, an idea, essentially, what right. the formula is, but the manufacturing and putting together that into a product that you can sell is what. So, but Nick has some statistics about the, the medical world. I mean, really, it's funny how the medical world works. There was a study in, I think, 2003 or 2004, there were 72 drugs, new drugs developed and patented. And of those, seven were considered new drugs that actually cured the right. disease. Right. Of those seven, none were made by pharmaceutical companies. They were all made by university research. So my personal position is that we should increase NSF funding and NIH funding. Like, get, you know, because universities, we're, we're getting like, you know, restless leg syndrome from the actual drug companies. Right. That's not a valuable thing for society. But, uh, excuse me. Sure. I don't take issue with that outside the hall, because my <laughs> mind suffers from that. It's not a joke. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, those kind of drugs, it's not cancer. You know? So you've decided what to know. So you've decided what to know. We have to wrap it up. We have to wrap it up. Can I ask a question? Not a comment. Not a question. A question. If Shakespeare were alive today, how do you think he would be making nothing? Yeah, All right, wait. What's the answer? Justin. I draw a five. Okay. What's the answer? I'm not serious. Oh. Follow ROI is probably nothing you can do. You're right. That was actually a terrible thing. You're right. That was a dumb question. Thank you very much.